Hello everybody, this is Jack from tofluency.com. And this is a little bit different, this English lesson from Vanessa, because I am going to ask her some questions. We're going to ask her questions that I think you're going to find very interesting. Yes, so if you would like to see a similar interview with Jack, I interviewed Jack on his channel and that video will be in the description of this video. So if you'd like to learn more about Jack or learn English with Jack, click on that link and you can see the other interview. Cool. Are you ready? I hope so. I don't know any of these questions. This yeah. is a, a complete surprise. So complete we'll... surprise. I'm, I'm going to be quite kind to you. Oh, thank you. Some of these questions are going to test your ability. Okay. Okay. Let's have a look. First one is, it's more of, it's not really a question. Okay. <laughs> it's more of a command. Okay. Introduce yourself in 30 seconds. Oh, yeah. Hi, I'm Vanessa. <laughs> <laughs> to me. Okay, to me. from Speak English. <laughs> okay. Um, hi, I'm Vanessa. I live in Asheville, and I'm an English teacher. I've been teaching English online for a while, but I love to travel, and I like to go hiking and spend time with my family and cats and be in nature. Is that 30 seconds? <laughs> More or less, right. The, question, the reason I like to ask that question is because what do you normally say when you are at a dinner party, you're uh -huh. at a bar, and someone says, what do you do? What do you do? Like, for my job? Yeah. Well, what, like, what, what do you do? I would say I'm an English teacher online. And usually the next question is, oh, where do you teach? Or what company do you teach for? And then I say, oh, I teach for myself. I have my own website, and I teach online to you. And then do people normally say, oh, I didn't know you could do that? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then <laughs> I have to explain. Oh, a lot of people ask too, do you speak all of those languages? Yes. Because they ask, what country do you teach? And like, yes. oh, do you speak Portuguese or Japanese or Russian? Like, oh no, this is for intermediate learners who already speak enough English to understand. Yeah. I always get that question. So do you speak Spanish and French and everything else? Just say yes. I speak yeah. all, all languages. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, why not? Yeah, 500. <laughs> um, okay, the next question. Are you a night owl or a morning person? Oh, ideally, I would love to be a morning person, but at the moment, I'm certainly a night owl. To me, going to bed at a good time is midnight. Oh, yeah. And... My New Year's resolution this year actually was okay. to go to bed at midnight. And it's been pretty good so far because I have to wake up kind of early. Not early for you with kids, but maybe like 7.30. Most days I wake up around 7.30. So if you wake up consistently at a specific time like that, then I'm bound to be tired earlier. But it's so hard to go to bed before midnight. And usually at at night my husband is active too yeah so we cook dinner at like nine or ten o'clock <laughs> wow and it's very spanish yeah i just feel more active at night but i would like to be a morning person right and it feels are, you, good. are you more creative at night or in the morning um in college i did most of my writing and papers and everything at night but now i try to do most of it in the morning Mm -hmm. So when I make videos or write posts or make lessons, I try to do it in the morning because at night is usually when there's more distractions. Like that's the fun time. <laughs> that's the fun, energetic time. But morning now is more focused time. Yeah. But not early. Not too early. <laughs> no. You like need a nine, ten o'clock. <laughs> after wow, yeah. So you need a little bit of time in the morning to get into work mode. Yeah, and I like to make a good breakfast in the morning. So that's like my morning routine. Okay. Speaking about food. Yes, I love it. <laughs> if you could eat only one meal for the rest of your life, what meal would you choose? And you have to eat this at every meal every day oh for the goodness. rest of your life. Does it have to sustain me? Like does it have to be healthy? You can decide that or not. I think I could, <laughs> I could, it's not a meal, but I think I could eat watermelon for the rest of my life, every meal, and be really happy, but I wouldn't live very long. <laughs> no. So it certainly wouldn't sustain me, but 
that's the like one food that I could eat forever. Isn't watermelon one of those foods where you burn more calories eating it than you actually get? Maybe. There's celery. a lot of water. Celery is one of those foods. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a lot of sugar, though, in watermelon. Oh, but yes. Usually that's right. in the summer, we buy, at least when I was younger, we used to buy a huge watermelon and then just cut it in half. This half is mine, this half is my dad's, and we just eat it all week. And then the next week, get another one. But I don't eat it quite as much now, but that's certainly my favorite food. It's not a meal. Mm-hmm. It's not no. A meal. It's not a meal. Hmm. I eat chili a lot. We talked about that in your video. Curry. I eat curry a lot. Mm, That's, yeah, I think the most, most of the things I eat are like simple, like just fruit and vegetables. So I would say watermelon. Okay, that's cool. I like that answer. (laughs) I like watermelon, but I hate preparing it. And I know Uh, that sounds silly, but they're so big. Yeah. Heavy. Mm, mm. And then just cutting them. That's the, the best mates. part. Oh, I hate it. When you first cut into it, my favorite mm. part is when you first cut it and then it cracks a little bit uh-huh. and you just smell the watermelon scent coming out. That is my <laughs> favorite thing. I can tell that you like watermelon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, now, speaking about meals as well, similar kind of theme. Do you prefer Thanksgiving mm. or Christmas? Oh, that's a good question. In mm. Just taking the holiday as, as a whole. I'd say Christmas. Right. Because I feel like Thanksgiving's exciting, but it kind of is just a meal and then it's finished. But Christmas is a build up. Like yes. you're decorating your house and it's getting colder and you're starting to drink hot chocolate and you hear Christmas music and it's like a long term excitement. And then sometimes because of that, Christmas Day feels a little disappointing. Yeah. Because you're so excited Christmas is coming, Christmas yeah. is coming. But Usually it's still as, at least for me, it's still as exciting because you go see family and you do something. Yeah. Instead of just eat a meal. And then Black Friday, speaking of Thanksgiving, Mm. do you go shopping? I hate shopping. You hate shopping? (laughs) What, in general? Yeah. Except for grocery shopping because I love food. But (laughs) if it's... If I have to buy something, I'll just go and buy it and come home. But Dan, my husband, loves shopping. He doesn't buy stuff, but he just looks at stuff. So he's the browser, and I'm the one sitting in the chairs at the front of the store waiting for him to finish. (laughs) Can we go home now? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's funny. I have to be in the right mood. And I think it has to do with spending money that typically... I'm really frugal, and I don't want to spend money on unnecessary things. So I have yeah. to feel like this is worth it, and our apartment where I live is not that big, so it has to be able to fit there and be something useful, usually. I'm exactly the same. If I want to get something, then I love to go and get it, you know, and feel that sense of, okay, I needed that, it's practical, it's within budget. Yeah. Yeah, my, my wife's the opposite. More like, more like Dan. Yeah, so I guess in that case, Black Friday, there are sales, so that would be good for people like us because yes. you want to save money. But I think it's also kind of a superfluous shopping. It's mm-hmm. not necessary stuff, generally. But no. if you had no. to buy something, it could be a good time. Like electronics, you could get a good deal, but mm-hmm. it's not my idea of fun. <laughs> no, everyone thinks about buying a TV, don't they? Oh, Black yeah. It's and there's like the long lines. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, and I do it online as well. Yeah. Yeah, there's deals online, so Amazon is my favorite store. <laughs> um, me too. This is probably the toughest question. I'm going to ask it now. Okay. What was the last lie you told? Oh, my goodness. The last lie I told. And remember, there are things like white lies. Yeah. Or there are very big lies. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free to open up and uh, tell everyone. Well... Mm, the last lie probably was something like, I like to do this, but I really don't like to do it. Because usually, I'm trying to think of something specific, because usually I don't want to hurt people's feelings. Yeah. So that kind of white lie is pretty common. Not like all the time, but I think it's easy to do that kind of thing. Mm, a specific situation. 
I'll, I'll tell you mine. Okay, okay, so that'll give me some give time, to, some time think. to think. Okay. Um, it was this morning when my wife said, oh, could, could you make sure that you do that before you leave? Yeah. And I was in a rush because I wanted to prepare for this. So I said, yeah, but I knew that I was not going to do it. Uh-huh. So you know? why did you say yes? Because if I said no, then, then she would have said, oh, but we need to do this or like, I think it's important, etc." So I said yes, and then I went, okay, I'm going to just leave. Oh, yeah, well. And it wasn't a big deal, but I you know, s- still it was a lie. <laughs> I say that often. I say that often to Dan about rubbing his back. Oh yeah. Because that's our relationship currency. That if I do a favor for him, yep. he has to rub my back for like ten minutes or something. But sometimes I say, "Oh yeah, I'll rub your back," and then I know that I probably won't do it. Yes. Oh yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it later. Or it'll be like yeah. one minute, but that's mm-hmm. it. So w- one minute, and you say, "Oh, my phone's ringing." <laughs> Sorry, I have just to get go. this call. It's it's about work. Yeah, or I just get distracted. I guess it's it's not really a white lie, but I guess it kind of is. Yeah. Yeah, that's a tough question. It is. Mm. Um, if you think about anything later, okay, then you can let us know. All right, I'll let you know all my my lies. <laughs> um, if you weren't a teacher, mm. what would you be doing instead? Mm, if I weren't a teacher. I think if I weren't a teacher, I'd probably be, well, I thought about being in probably a writer. I think I'd still be working for myself. Yeah. So in the past, before I became a teacher, I had several like travel blogs. Oh, yeah, I remember and them. wrote about like travel experiences. And I think with the knowledge that I have now, I didn't make any money doing that. That was just for fun. But I think that I could make money out of that with the knowledge I have now. So I think I'd probably be doing something like that, like writing, trying to share that information, whether it's about travel or lifestyle choices, alternative ideas. Mm -hmm. Usually I have a million ideas and that week it seems like the best idea. (laughs) So before I found out that you could teach English online when we were living in Korea, it's kind of that pressing question. What am I going to do when I leave Korea? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be able to be in the same kind of job in the U.S. So what am I going to do? And a million things (laughs) <laughs> crossed my mind and Dan and I thought about uh, together being interviewers for homeschooling because wow. Dan was homeschooled so we were trying to research about this I remember you talking about this yeah we were trying to do research about different ways you can homeschool and now there's so many resources about that but there's not like interviews with real people who do it. So we thought, what if, because we didn't know what city we wanted to live in, what if we traveled to different cities and then interviewed different families who homeschooled as like education for ourselves mm-hmm. to see do what do we think about it and also share those interviews with other people and then try to monetize it and maybe get like uh, magazines to support us Mm -hmm. or some websites to be our sponsors stuff like that but that was one idea (laughs) and obviously it didn't work out but i think that all the ideas have been working for myself yeah to have that freedom yeah creativity yeah once you start that it's so hard to stop (laughs) well there's a good follow-up question with that yes and as a child what did you wish to become when you grew up oh so has that changed over time yes (laughs) Um, When I was in elementary school, I wanted to be a professional water skier because... Wow, (laughs) I was not expecting that. (laughs) Because (laughs) when I was in elementary school, there were five families who had daughters my age and my sister's age. And it was amazing that there were five families in my school, my small school, who had the exact same family, like two daughters our age. And we used to go have adventures together or spend the weekend together and we rented this lake house and one family had a boat and everyone tried water skiing and no one could do it it's actually pretty hard like you have to have the certain 
stance and everything, but no one could do it. And then it was my turn and I was in the water waiting for the boat to get started and my dad was beside me and he's like, okay, Vanessa, you can do it. You can get up. And I was like, oh yeah, I can do it. It's not that hard, right? <laughs> and then when I did it, I got up and I was the only person who could water ski. And of course, that was like a huge ego boost that, wow, Vanessa can do something that no one else can do here. And I don't know why I could do it because I was a pretty small kid, especially like before puberty. I was really small, like the smallest in my class. But that was, I think, the first moment when I felt like, I can do something unique. Yeah. And I'm going to be doing this professionally. Soon. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that was the first dream. But the biggest dream throughout high school was to become a pilot. And that was my first job to work at the airport. I thought you were going to say as a pilot. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> my first job was working yeah. in the small airport in Greenville where I grew up. And they just have like single engine airplanes for two people or four people. But yeah. I was 15 and I couldn't drive, but I learned to fly an airplane before I could drive. Not by myself, like you have to be with someone. But I bartered for flight lessons, so they didn't pay me, but I worked at the hangar washing airplanes and cleaning stuff. And then in after that in the evenings, once a week, the pilot would take me up and just show me things. And it was really basic stuff. It wasn't yeah. like, actually, I was about to become a pilot. But some of the other people who did similar things got their license and went further with it than I did. But I feel like that dream, I like the idea of freedom and doing my own thing. And I think that that was the basis yeah. for the dream of being a pilot. I, I might still want to do that in the future, but once I started to travel, my dream to become a pilot almost stopped. Right. Like somehow that idea of like going to travel and doing something like freeing and flying off on my own, that yeah. kind of image was, I think, the basis for the dream to become a pilot. But that time was a really happy time in my life. Yeah, cause, sounds like it. Yeah. And I think you probably realize that being a pilot probably means going to Charlotte, to Atlanta, <laughs> to Charlotte, to Atlanta. Yeah, well, there's a lot of, uh, like, alternative kind of pilot jobs. Oh, are there? Like, one of my teachers in elementary school, her daughter's husband or someone was basically a private pilot for someone rich. <laughs> and there's a lot of people who do that kind of thing, where yeah. you're the chartered pilot. And I often thought, <laughs> I don't know, this is such a strange dream, but <laughs> my dream was to be, I don't even know if it's a specific job, but to be the person over the beach who flies some kind of banner. Oh yeah, <laughs> like they, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They fly some kind of banner. So yeah. in high school, my notebooks were covered in drawings of an airplane, me in the airplane, and then some kind of silly phrase or joke on the banner. <laughs> There's a lot of variations of that dream. Wow. But pilot was, the thing and my room was covered in airplanes yeah there were no princesses you, and ponies uh, in my room <laughs> do you see yourself flying planes at a later point in your life maybe i think this small planes is yep. basically like a hobby yeah like my is. uncle has a small plane and it's just his hobby I mean, he's also single and has no other expenses so he buys an airplane it's pretty much the price of a car, but mm -hmm. you can fly anywhere. And that's what he does on the weekends. And I feel like in that way, it could be pretty cool, but not necessarily as a job. Yeah. Like once it becomes a job, maybe it becomes less fun. <laughs> yeah. In um, Here in Asheville in October, they do flights around Asheville. Oh, yeah, on yeah. Plane. I did it for my birthday a cool. few years ago. Oh, that'd be great um, with the mountains. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. I think I talked about that for a while. Sorry. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so um, let's have a look. Next question is, what book are you reading at the moment? Oh, I just finished a book called State of Wonder. And it's about, it's a fiction novel about a doctor who goes to Brazil into the Amazon to try to find this 
pharmacologist or somebody who's been developing a drug for their company, right. but that person's kind of like missing in action and they can't contact her and they don't know what's happening. And so she has this adventure going into the Amazon and is amazing. Just through her eyes, it's like mine. I've never been there. I've never experienced that. So it was just really cool to see a whole new world. Yeah. But that's the book I just finished. But for the last two months, I've been reading another book that's kind of on and off, Sapiens. Oh, yeah. I think you recommended it. I did. Yeah. 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 We have a little book club with some friends, and we get together every couple weeks and talk about it. Did you get the audiobook? Yeah. We ended up getting it, and it's really good. Isn't it amazing? Yeah. So I'm reading it, and then a couple days later, Dan will listen to the same thing that I just read, but right. it's good. You can and listen to it. Do you normally read physical books, e-books, listen to audio books? Do you have a preference? Um, when I lived abroad, I read my Kindle all the time because, because that was it. <laughs> you didn't have space to get. Yeah, I couldn't travel with books. And yeah. I didn't have as wide of a variety of physical books at the library. As I said, I'm cheap. I'm not going to buy every book that I want to read. Yeah. So now I just go to the library and get a book. And that book, actually, The State of Wonder about Brazil. I found that in the free book box. Oh, Do you yeah, guys have that yeah, in your yeah. neighborhood? Um, I know they have it at the Pack Library. Oh, it's like a little, usually it's in a neighborhood. Oh, the little library. Yeah. Yes. So it's like a, it's almost like a mailbox <laughs> yeah. and there's free books inside, but there's a couple in my neighborhood and I've read almost all the books in those little libraries. They're great, aren't they? Yeah. And you just return it and I've put books in there that are mine that I don't want anymore. And I've kind of felt like lately books are good but they take up a lot of space yeah so i feel more free about just going to the library and renting it or giving away the book after i've read it unless yeah. it's like really personal yeah we 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 have got rid of a lot of books recently mm. it's um, hard to travel they just with take, books. <laughs> yeah they take up so much space yeah um did you have a nickname at school oh at school not really. Actually, my parents chose my name because it's hard to make a nickname out of Vanessa. Ness? Yeah, like you could say Nessa. Ness or Nessa. And that's what people might say if they could, but it's not so easy to make a nickname out of it. Like my parents' names, Theodore and Pamela, were always Pam and Ted. Yeah. And they didn't like that it was so short and wanted something more descriptive or longer. So that's why they named me something that was kind of hard and my sister too Charisse you could say Reese but my parents were pretty strict about that I, it's Vanessa it's Charisse <laughs> right so yeah. did you also like stick to that as well if someone gave you a nickname did you say no just call me yeah Vanessa. there were really no nicknames that people even tried to give me except oh. for Dan's family calls me Nessa so that was kind of the first time they're rebellious <laughs> yeah <laughs> the first time that we're people gonna call didn't... you <laughs> We're going to call you Nessa. Yeah. And sometimes as a like childhood name, my sister, she couldn't pronounce Vanessa when she was really young. So I don't remember this because I was too young too. But my parents say that she called me Vashi. So sometimes in like birthday cards, my parents will write, happy birthday Vashi, because I'm their like, little girl. Yeah. <laughs> But no one really calls me nicknames except for Dan's family, Nessa. Yeah. But does uh, do you have nicknames for Dan? Um, usually I don't use his name often. Usually what I just say it? like uh. "hun," "dear," oh, "honey," right. "sweetie," yeah. "babe," <laughs> "babe." Yeah, <laughs> like I realize that I don't often say Dan unless I'm around other people. And if we're if he's at work, sometimes if I'm trying to get his attention, maybe I'll say. Hey, hon, but if he's not thinking that I'm there, then I'll say Dan or Daniel. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, when you're angry. Yeah. Daniel. <laughs> Daniel, come here. It gets here. more his mom, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't want to get into that kind of. Uh, yeah. Relationship. Usually we just use pet names. Yeah. <laughs> I've got two more questions. Okay, I'm ready. Um, what is something that your English learning community doesn't know about you? Hmm. I think I've said well, a lot of those so far. Mm, interesting. <laughs> you know, like a, a party trick or oh. something that you can do that other people can't. Oh, that's a hard on the spot question. Can um, think about that. Well, today I mentioned a couple of those that I 
learn to fly an airplane that's cool before driving a car that is pretty cool that's pretty unusual it's a party trick that's a party trick <laughs> get in the airplane kind of party you're at. <laughs> yeah yeah um i think m- the stuff that i share with my students the stuff that i talk about in youtube videos often maybe are things that some of my friends don't know mm-hmm. like talking about experiences living abroad or like learning languages is a lot of what we talk about but a lot of my friends maybe either haven't traveled or they don't speak other languages so when they hear oh you can speak french it's shocking really because a lot of people in the u.s at least if you haven't traveled you probably haven't learned another language enough to be especially french yeah maybe spanish is yeah a lot of people know a little bit of spanish at least or People, if they if they speak a language mm-hmm. and their first language is English, then it's always going to be Spanish. Yeah, maybe something surprising is maybe not super surprising is that a lot of my students say like, "How can you always be so happy? How can you always be so energetic?" But I think if you came to my house for dinner, I'm probably more energetic than you even imagine. <laughs> Really? <laughs> like, I feel like... You are energetic. If we're listening to music and tonight we're going to have some friends over and make pizza and play a game, sometimes I feel like other people are like, oh, wow, you have lots of energy. Yeah. <laughs> and th- I'd say enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. Yeah. Maybe that's it. And I, w- when I'm we... really excited about watermelon. Or yeah. flying or something. <laughs> um, Do you not like it? Well, no, it's just when you said, and I love cutting the watermelon. Oh, that's specifically yeah, the yeah. best part, yeah. Um, but, yeah, when we came over for dinner, we were dancing to Michael Jackson. Oh, yeah. My, my son was dancing, too. Yeah. Yeah, lots okay. of enthusiasm. Yeah. It's a, good thing, it's a great thing to have. Not really a party trick. <laughs> no, no. Um, but it's something, yeah, that they might not know. That you're not just happy on video, yeah. but you're happy in real life. Try um, my best. Last question. Okay. If you could live anywhere in the world, where would you choose to live? Mm. Apart from Asheville. Oh, I've been really happy with Asheville. That's not the answer, I guess, but I've been really happy living here. You can answer it in any kind of way. But yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push you to <laughs> an actual place. <laughs> Have to say somewhere else. Yeah. And somewhere that you've not been. Let, let's just throw that in. Oh, I, that I've never visited? Yeah. Well, first of all, I like living in Asheville, and I imagine myself living here for a while. Somewhere that I've been, but I haven't really lived yet. Yeah. I think I think I could see myself maybe living in Strasbourg, France. Really? It was really cool. Just the city was very livable. It didn't feel like... A tourist city it felt really different from Paris or the south of France like the south of France is just like a fairy tale everything mm-hmm. is just perfect and looks beautiful but it seems to me like it would just seem too unreal to live there on a daily basis but yeah. like Strasbourg seemed the people we met there we just met some random people who just talked to us and they just seemed so friendly and the atmosphere was just a good mix between just Europe it's just pure Europe because it's mm, Germany and France kind of mixed together yeah I think someday I'd like to live in Japan too have you been to Japan only the airport right (laughs) so you haven't really experienced it yeah so in a real sense when I've talked with my Japanese students and when I've watched YouTube videos about Americans or foreigners who have lived there it just seems like I really loved living in Korea, but I couldn't live there forever, mainly because, well, it's it's far from everything, like family and everything, but it would be really hard to work at an English school, which is the only legal job you can have as an American. I just can't work in that system for the rest of my life, but I think it would be cool to do my job now in say Japan somewhere that would be new to me but it just seems really interesting yeah definitely I'd love to go there yeah 
those are my answers. Cool. Well, good. <laughs> Thanks for your questions. Yeah. And guys, if you have further questions for Vanessa, leave them below. Yes. And thanks so much for listening to my <laughs> long and sometimes unanswers. I didn't really answer about a lie um, or a party trick, but it's okay. No, that's okay. <laughs> and you know that you can make another lesson about it yeah. when it comes to you. Yes. Yeah. If I think of one, I'll let you know. And if you want to answer any of these questions for yourself. What is a food that you love and you'd eat every day? Or what's the last lie you told? Let us know in the comments. It'd be really interesting. And make sure to check out Jack's interview. I asked Jack a bunch of questions on his channel. So you can just click on the link in the description and go to that video. So thanks so much, everyone. Thanks, Jack. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yes, see you later. See you. Bye, Bye everyone. The next step is to download my free ebook. Five Steps to Becoming a Confident English Speaker. This will help you know what is the next step in your English journey to help you really master English and speak fluently. Feel free to subscribe so that you get a notification every time there's a new English lesson. Thanks so much and I'll see you later. Bye.